Reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days, and on the third day he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord. As certain as the dawn is his coming, and his judgment shines forth like the light of the day. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is more, your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this reason, I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the word of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and from my sin cleanse me. It is mercy I desire, not sacrifice. For you are not pleased with sacrifice. Should I offer burnt offerings, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humble. O oh God, you will not spurn. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness, by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifice, burnt offerings, and holocausts. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance, would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this morning's reading the gospel reminds us of the danger of self-righteousness. Jesus gives us this parable this morning of this Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee has fallen into the trap of self-righteousness. He looks around and sees the things that he is doing and sees himself as righteous in himself. Hence the word self-righteous. He doesn't attribute any of his goodness to God, but to his own actions. And that's always the danger and the trap of self-righteousness. We think that because we do a certain number of things, that we're able to accomplish certain things, that somehow uh, we do it on our own. And this is the thing, is that could we truly be righteous without the grace of God? Is it possible to be able to resist temptation and sin without God's grace? Is it possible to be holy without the holiness of God? Is it possible for us to achieve the kind of love and the mercy that God commands us that we heard yesterday without God's love, without God's mercy, without God's grace pouring through our lives? Well, of course not. It's foolishness to consider oneself righteous without the grace of God, without God's love and without God's mercy. To consider oneself not even needing God's mercy. We see the prayer of this tax collector. He says that he's not able to even lift his eyes up to heaven. All he knows is that he is a sinner and is seeking God's forgiveness. We are all sinners. We all need God's mercy. Maybe not every moment of our lives, maybe not every day, but we have all have needed God's mercy. We have all found ourselves in a state of sin. And it is only by God's mercy, only by God's grace, can we find ourselves restored and put on the right path to grow in holiness, to grow in love, to grow in mercy. We can become righteous but only with God's help. So today, as we reflect on this gospel, as we consider the readings, for we hear about God's mercy, let us realize that we are all in need of God's grace. Let us unite ourselves to God's love, to God's mercy, and let us become instruments of that mercy. And then we will find true righteousness. Now let us bring our petitions before God. Let us pray for Joey Betts, who this Mass is being offered for. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, for Pope Benedict Emeritus, and for all the bishops and cardinals of the world, that they will be good shepherds and guide the church in truth and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, all religious, and all those who are striving to serve God, that we will unite ourselves to God's grace and grow in holiness each and every day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, all those who are suffering around the world, that they may come into the presence of Christ and find healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our men and women in the armed forces, that God will send his angels to God and protect them in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our president, our congress, and our judges, that they'll be guided by the Holy Spirit and the conduct of their offices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our intentions in our book of special needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead and all those who mourn their passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for all those who've been infected by the coronavirus. They may find healing and comfort. And for an end of the spread of this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know that you are an easy even before we ask you to bring all the petitions to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Similar way, so it was it. They took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, full, drink it. This is the chalice of my mother, the new and eternal cup. Pour it out, you have made it, and it gives us things. Do it. It's the memory of the Lord. Do it. It's the memory of the
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, confession and resurrection. You come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the dead and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to hell just for the divine your presence and ministry to you. Humbly we pray that partakers of the body and blood of Christ will be gathered. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world, and reign of the homeless and children, together with branches of heaven, God, and tradition, and all of their mercy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the church, all who have died in your mercy. Why would we do the light of your face? Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you, grant you. May we merit, recover, and eternal life. We pray to the Lord for you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, but the poor of the son of the land. For in our version, the turn of our roof, and the shed of our and last year.
Let us pray. May we truly revere a merciful God, these holy gifts by which we ceaselessly nourish us. May we always partake of that of abundant faith in our heart. Thanks to our Lord. Amen. Lord, be with you. With your spirit. The Almighty God, bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. They are protection against the wickedness. and the saints. 